Are y'all ready this morning? Before we get started, I want you to turn with me to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And I want you to know that Paul says something that is very interesting in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 that I want to bring to your attention so that you can know exactly where we're going, amen? 15 verse 34, and just say amen when you are there. Let's read that out loud in verse 34. Ready? Read. Awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Now stop right there. I want you to know that this scripture right here alludes to the fact that there were some people who had a difficult time receiving the teachings of Paul and uh, and what Paul was trying to communicate to them about the grace of God. Amen. And he says that it is so necessary for them for you to awake to righteousness. Amen. I want you to know that real, your righteousness is a position of right standing with God to where all of your needs will be met according to his riches and glory and you will be blessed with the desires of your heart and the favor of God is consistent in your life to where it seems like the faucet is turned on in your life and it never ever turns off and the church said that is the position and the status quo that we have available to us but he's saying very clearly that you can be made in the righteousness of God and the righteousness of God can be extended to you. But until you awake to your righteousness, it's not going to benefit you at all. And that's why it's necessary for you to come to church so you can get the word of God. Because faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And the more that you hear the word of God, you will develop the faith that you need in order to wake up. Glory to God. Are you listening to me? He says you got to awake to this righteousness. You got to understand the grace of God. You got to wake up to it because before we have been in a drunken stupor to where it does not seem like we're grasping the things of God and taking full benefit of what he's extended to us. The only reason why that can happen is because we're still asleep when we need to be awake. And the church said, we got to wake up, glory to God. Even though it is available to us, our righteousness will not benefit us until we wake up to our righteousness. Until you get into the word of God and you begin to realize what the grace of God is all about. I want you to know then it's not going to benefit us at all. In other words, we got a whole bunch of believers that are living below their means. The reason why is because they're not awake. Are you listening to me? Some of us are walking with our eyes wide shut. We're not awake to our righteousness. If you were awakened to your righteousness, guarantee you, you will not continue in sin. That's a telltale sign that you're not awake if you're continuing in that sin. Amen? So we have to know beyond a shadow of a doubt what he's talking about, waking up to the righteousness of God. Amen? Are you listening to me? Now, he's saying that in order for you to understand the position that Christ has placed you in, he said you have to come to the personal revelation for yourself. You have to get your eureka moment. In other words, the light bulb has to go off in you in order for the righteousness in the position that I have placed you in to benefit you, the light bulb has to go off on the inside. That's why it's not time to miss no church. I say, I say, it's not time to miss church. Are you listening to me? The Word of God talks about it in the book of Hebrews to where it says to forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some, knowing that the days are coming. Amen? Are you listening to me? 
The reason why that is is because the more that we reach, the closer that we come to the culmination of time, there's instructions and information that's going to be coming forth. And the more instructions and information be coming forth, your faith is going to be developed to the point to where now you can go fishing for what you want. And the church said, you can, wait a minute, and the church said, amen, amen. glory to God. How would you like the opportunity to go fishing in the spirit and be able to get whatever you want? Are you listening to me? He says that comes through instruction. That comes through the development of your faith. Development of your faith comes through someone who is called to bring forth the word of God so that they can teach you the way that they need to teach you. And the church said, I'm going to teach you something this morning. I'm going to show you to where you will never ever have a doubt in your mind about in the order for you to understand where we're going yeah. this morning I need to exercise your discernment that enables you not to only focus on these two individuals the first and the last Adam as two individuals but I need you to focus on these two individuals as two individual systems amen I need you to begin to see these as not uh, two individuals but two different methodologies I need you to see these as two different administrations. I need you to begin to see it as two different covenants. I need you to begin to see it as the old and the new. Amen. Because once you can begin to see it from that perspective, then I want you to understand that you will never again vacillate between the two. And that's where we're running into most of the problems as born again believers, we vacillate between the old system and the new system. And whenever we try to mix the two, I'm here to tell you, it will always cause turbulence in your individual life. Why? Because that old system, if you really think about it, it had nothing to do with you in the first place. I'm going to say that, I'm gonna, you got to hear this by the Spirit. Because what we did is traditionalize the Word of God. In the sense of, well, my grandparents did this, so I'm going to do this. And my mom and daddy did it, so I'm going to do it. And then we just followed it and all the way down the line, not realizing that if you, are, if you are a Gentile, then that old system had nothing to do with you in the first place. But now that we have become so intertwined in that old system, it's extremely difficult to separate those people who had nothing to do with it in the first place from that old system. Are you listening to me? The law was given to the Jewish people. If you are a born-again believer in this room right now, I want you to know that Gentiles had nothing to do with the law, nothing to do with it. We made ourselves have something to do with it. Are you listening to me? But if the truth be told, we didn't have nothing to do with it. Matter of fact, because every Gentile who is born again is born again under a whole new system, which is the system of Christ. Let me do it like this. Every born-again believer since the time that Jesus resurrected was born under a whole new administration. Are you listening to me? But somewhere along the line, we thought it was the right thing to follow the Torah and get involved in the Sabbath and all these different ceremonial acts that we had nothing to do with in the first place. Are you listening to me? So I'm going to show you through the Word of God that it was never God's design or intention for us to get involved in that in the first place. Amen? Check this out. In the Word of God, it says that we are at one time were alienated to the commonwealth of Israel. That's what the Word said and the church said. So if at one time you were alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, why is it that you're going to try to follow the law that's attached to the commonwealth if you were alienated from the first place? And the church said, are you understanding what I'm saying to you? Are you understanding what I'm saying to you? I got to check y'all out now. In other words, if we at one time were alienated, 
why would we get ourselves involved in the law that taps into the wealth that we're alienated from? Are you getting it? Guys, if you read the word of God very carefully, you're going to find out that this right here is not rocket science. Amen? We just thought in the process of us trying to be holy, trying to do the right thing, we thought that it was a good thing for us to just follow all these laws and do it the way that the Jewish folk do it when it had nothing to do with you in the first place. Amen? Are you all ready for this? I tell you, I'm going to take you to school now. You cannot be in the lineage of Christ, which is the last Adam, and try to employ the methodologies of the first Adam. Are you listening to me? This Adam was earthly, but this Adam was heavenly. This Adam was fleshy, and this Adam was spiritual. Are you listening? You got two different mindsets, two different methodologies that you really need to focus on, and you cannot blend the two. It's very important that you know that you cannot mix these two different dispensations. You cannot mix the old ways with the new ways. Everybody in here was grandfathered into the new way. Amen. You didn't do anything to deserve it. You didn't do anything to merit it. You didn't do anything to earn it. He said that I'm going to do this for you so that I can honor the covenant that I swore with Abraham. He said you didn't have nothing. You didn't even have to do anything because Christ already did everything for you. Amen. Amen. And Christ is, was in the loins of Abraham, so I want you to know, you didn't have to do anything to receive it. All you got to do is believe it. How hard is that? Did y'all hear what I said? He said, all we got to do is believe that it's already done. When he says that it is finished, I want you to know that that concludes everything. Everything that needed to be done is already finished for every born-again believer in here. Your healing is finished. Your prosperity is finished. Your wholeness is finished. He said your salvation package is finished. He said it's already finished. He said all you got to do is believe that it's done. And it's done. Amen. It goes back to waking up to righteousness. You got to understand that the first Adam, he, op he was the one who opened up the door to the blessing and the cursing. Yes, he was. But the last Adam, he was the one that closed the door on the cursing and institu instituted the blessing. Amen? What does that mean? Well, in other words... The blessing and the cursing is not something that the last Adam even offers. He offers the blessing and that's it. Are you listening? All that blessing and cursing, because some people, when they try to intertwine both, both, both administrations, they will continue to tell people that, well, you're cursed with a curse. No, you're not. As a born-again believer, you cannot be cursed. Did you hear what I said? <laughs> How is it that you can curse what God has blessed? Glory to God. You can't be cursed. Why? Because I already accepted the blessing. Glory to God. And if I got the blessing on the inside of me, how is it that I can be cursed? You can't be cursed. Don't think if you make mistakes, if you fail at this, if you fail at that, that you're walking in a curse. No, it's not that. You might want to reevaluate some of the decisions that you're making, but I want you to know that that curse can't come from Christ. Christ can't give what he doesn't have. Amen? He can't give what he doesn't have. He said, all I have for you is blessing. He said, your time is a time of love, and during this time, I'm just going to do you good and make you happy. Hey, glory to God. I'm going to do you good and make you happy. I'm not going to demonstrate my judgment towards you. And you can't sin your way out of it. Did y'all hear?